The 10 minute drill. This is a big one. Covered by Universal Roof and Contracting. The difference is universal. On 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. All right, let's rock this house. Gang, sports concepts, and rationalizations coming your way. We call it the 10-minute drill. At the end of the drill, Beef, we hand out a prize pack. What are we handing out today yeah, on this baby. wonderful Friday? Uh, one lucky Guggen at the end of the 10-minute drill is going to take home a free floral arrangement delivered by Kuhn Flowers and lunch or dinner for two from Chick-fil-A. Outstanding. Which That's... we just had a delicious breakfast courtesy of Dan. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you, sir. Well, let's let's talk about Miles Garrett. Listen, um, uh, uh, went to his appeal, lost his appeal. Marquise Pouncey, by the way, his appeal was uh, knocked down a game. Uh, but the big story really was <clears throat> Miles Garrett uh, accusing Mason Rudolph of using a racial slur. And we all know what that racial slur was that he accused him of, which puts everybody in a tough spot. Now, if it happened, that's fine. But there's no evidence whatsoever of it happening. Now, I don't know who was mic'd for this game. No, there's nothing. Um, no, no, no sound. nothing to be gleaned from. Right. From players that are mic'd up, but the- it's a it's a heinous thing to do if if Miles Garrett is just making this up to try to get his, and it makes him look even worse as a human being that you would accuse someone of that, especially in in the climate with which we live right now. I, I I'm just so well. The NFL has. Well, I would be so disappointed. Now, again, if he said it, then so be it. That's I, fine. Well, but there, there's zero the evidence ev- well, that the, he said the, it. In fact, the evidence says that he didn't say it. Right. I mean, that's the evidence. The only evidence, if it's quote evidence, that he said it is Miles. Garrett's accusation that he said it. There were other players there that have been interviewed and didn't hear anything. Right. Cleet, was it Blakeman? Cleet Blakeman. Cleet Blakeman. I, was, I hate Cleet, though. But he was standing right there while the two were, <laughs> were going at it. Well, no, my thought would no be one, the only- no one, and no one on Mason Rudolph's team has ever seen or heard it. Yeah. It's just, it's, it, it reeks of, of using it as a weapon in an appeal. It reeks of desperation. Thinking that yeah. it wasn't going to get out, which is very naive. Thinking that it wasn't going to yeah, get out. Yeah, I think out. he thought yeah. he could use that to help his own case. Now, the guys who reviewed the case are former and FSU. By the way, and, and by the way, yeah. that that just for the record, that would be an ugly, terrible thing to do. But that shouldn't lower your suspension. So, I mean, what's the 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 like? What's the purpose? Of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know what you thought using that for your side would do. You don't lower a suspension because of words. We ever heard sticks and stones? They still say that anymore. Right. You can't. Yeah, I don't care what he called you or said to you. You picked up a helmet and well, swung at him in the head. And in listening to uh, specifically uh, uh, African-American commentators, and I'm talking about I saw Ryan Clark, I saw Booger, uh, they said the same thing. I, well, you know, any they, reasonable person does. So you can't. So uh, the whole thing was – I don't know, man. Everybody tells you Miles Garrett's a great guy, and he's just this and that, and you, you start to wonder on some of this. Well, stuff. this is worse than this helmet swing to in, me. In some ways, yes. I mean, it's it's proves it's got less character in this swing. You're swinging a helmet in a violent physical game where that stuff's been going on all game, but yeah. this is just anyway uh, despicable. Uh, it, it, and again, uh, no, you, we may as well say that's not true because that's what the. The burden of proof shows. Yeah. The NFL investigated and said no. Nobody else on the planet mm-hmm. heard him say that. Derek Brooks and James Thrash, I believe, were the two yeah. who reviewed it and uh, both said, yeah, we're, we're upholding the uh, the entire suspension, which means now we go into next year and, you know, we get to September 8th kickoff or whatever the date is, and they say, well, Miles, you're going to do another four games. You well, know, and, and maybe, and, and, and you know what? Uh-huh. If Miles Garrett isn't careful, we'll go a really deep investigation, and and we'll take every angle. We'll read lips. We'll pull any audio. Mm-hmm. And if he didn't say that, it's it's going to be indefinite for about four years, or whatever. I that's just. Um, I, I uh, by the way, I, I would like to add this too. Uh-huh. It's just the feather and the cap, the cherry on top of what has been an awful year PR wise for the NFL. Not good. I mean, you had Antonio Brown and all that uh, situation yeah. from from training camp and then into it. Don't forget that Tyree Kill audio in the off season, uh, right? Yeah. You also have um, you know this Colin Kaepernick uh, fiasco over the weekend where neither side looked like they knew what they were doing. Yep. And now this, and you got the ongoing saga with the referees who sort of struck again last night towards the end of the game on a play that they should have at least reviewed. It was questionable enough that at least you review it, and it, again. I was thinking about this on the drive in today, and and everybody, not everybody, but you and others have poo pooed my make the officials full time, and I'll stand by that. I I believe if you at least made the officials full time, you're admitting that there's an error, and we're working on it, and the perception 
gets a little bit greater that it, it does matter to It'll us be- because this is embarrassing and it happens. Listen, I don't care. I mean, if you're full time, why do this. you go to why? why <laughs> the replay booth probably is full time. By write, the way, write this down. Next Friday morning, we're going to be there'll here, be something, yeah. and there'll be something because yeah. I believe now it's every single game in the NFL. There's something that happens. Last that makes night you was go, incomprehensible. What are we doing? In case you uh, you know you missed it, the Colts are down three. Houston's driving. Yeah, Deshaun Watson fumbles. That's clear. The replay shows that it's clear that he fumbled, and. Darius Leonard claims to have the ball. The officials didn't even review it. They said it was a fumble, but a clear recovery by Houston, yet it's it's Leonard who has the ball. Right. And so it's just it's incomprehensible that you wouldn't send that up for a review. They didn't it's less than two minutes, so Bill or, or um Oh gosh, Frank Wright can't review it. Right. He doesn't have the power. Right. So how can you not be Did he um, have did Frank Wright have a t- timeout? I think he had one. Why not use it there and make I, them I, come I, over? It, it may yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh-huh. he was under the impression they didn't recover it. I, I didn't know, you know, I don't know when Darius Leonard told people he had the ball. But yeah. after the game, I mean, it was just, they acted like it was crystal clear that he had it. Right. I never saw the 15,000. I had given up on the game by then. I, I was not up at that point, so I just saw the highlights today, and I didn't see 10,000 different angles on that particular play. Right. But I did see the angle that showed he definitely fumbled. And then so for there not to be a review to make sure who recovered it sounds – Especially at that stage with everything on. Just be sure, man. Right. I mean, all you do is right. freaking maybe, may, and maybe stop games. Or maybe it is still Houston's ball, right? right. Maybe maybe it maybe it still is. Um, it took the passing of a former player for me to recognize his that's real. amazing. You see it right there? No, that's oh, amazing that about what it. you're about to say. Yeah. Did you know this? No. I never knew this either. But the passing of a player. And by the way, if you're uh, old guys like me and Dan – we you were, know him. Yeah, Fred Cox would be like, you know, Mike Vanderjack or, you know, just think of a guy. Yeah. He's a very long time kicker. I like, kicked for 15 years in the league. He yeah. was, was the most accurate one year, but he died yesterday. But it took his death for me to realize that as part of the opit, that Fred Cox, an old Vikings kicker, was the one who invented the Nerf football. I had no idea. It's just terrific. The Nerf, which, which, which is a whole nother um, Love Nerf box football. of awesomeness to open. Is there a a man walking the United States of America's planet, you know, the planet yeah. that has doesn't have a nerf foot didn't have a nerf football at one point? Uh, there probably are. But probably, point I being, I, I don't think they're as prevalent. popular as they used to be. That's what I said. But you know what, Dan? You know why we think that? Oh, why? Because we're fifty and our kids are twenty five, so we haven't been around nerf footballs. I promise you, I my kids got nerf footballs every Christmas. Yeah. I know Brooks has had, has had Nerf football, yeah, and I'm sure Drew did he's too. 14. And well, I know that I did. I had you know just a ton of them through yeah. the years. Yeah, it's crazy. But crazy. yeah, the inventor of the Nerf football. So, um, which uh, it was often good as a kicker back then to have a second hobby because you were terrible. Kickers then were terrible. We've talked yeah. about that too. Yeah. A 35 yard field goal back in the day was like get on your knees and pray that he makes it. It's ju- it was a journey. <laughs> it was a journey. It wasn't. We looked at some of the. Um, field goal percentages and how they were like leaders in field goal percentage back then would, would, would be like 66%. <laughs> leaders oh, now are right. hundred. Yeah. And, and by the way, they kick it twice as much now as they did then. So kicking may be the biggest improvement in, of all in the league. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what do you make of Brian Kelly's name surfacing? This is a dangerous game. I think of perception that you play when you're on a coaching search. Well, I got a bigger, <laughs> the bigger story to me with FSU is, is the letter. In your letter. Yeah. Uh, November 20th letter shipped overnight to many members of Seminole Boosters. Give FS- me some money. We need some money. FSU President John Thrasher calls on boosters to either raise their annual contribution levels or make a one-time increase of 20%. Thank you. Above their normal donation, Thrasher said the additional funds are needed to help the program make the transition to a new coaching staff following the firing of Willie Taggart. As the current football season progressed, our program reached a crossroads, Thrasher said. AD, uh, David Coburn, and I chose to take a decisive action to help restore our status as a national contender. We're currently conducting a comprehensive national search for a new head coach, interviewing numerous respected candidates. Director Coburn and I are asking each candidate to share his vision for Florida State football, our goals to find the right fit. I'm grateful so many of our donors have reached out to ask how they can help. Here's how you can help. We have received several generous commitments of support to begin the overall effort, but we need every member of Seminole Boosters to contribute what they can to achieve an even greater result. Um, Florida State's on the hook for about $18 million to Willie Taggart. They also owe an additional several million 
to assistant coaches if they're not retained by the new head coaching staff, new head coach, which most likely will happen, as well as any buyouts needed to bring in a new coaching staff. Uh, the document, the one-page document, is titled "The Renaissance of Florida State Football." <laughs> The Renaissance. By the way, no one, just for the record, to John Thrash or anyone else involved with, with FSU, football fans don't get inspired by the word renaissance. That's not exactly a go-get-em football term. I, listen, <laughs> boosters are, you know, they have a lot of money, and so they can decide what they want to do with their money, and that's fine. Um, but I've been reminded by an old quote of what a boat is, if you were ever a boat owner. A boat is a, a hole in the water to which one pours money. Uh, don't become like that, FSU football. In other words, okay, so I pay, I helped pay to get rid of Willie, but that's okay because I wanted Willie out of there. So I threw I threw a few extra million in on that. Now I'm going to throw in a few extra million on the coaching search so you can get me Bob Stoops or whomever. And then in a year, after we get this guy, this guy's going to come in and say, we need better facilities, and you're going to kick off a $500 million campaign to build new facilities. Well, it seems like before you made that move, you would have had an idea that you were going to get to this point and this would have been done beforehand. But if you do all that beforehand, then the word gets out. That's right. Which is kind of how I remember when the first gossip and innuendo was breached. It was because of the money. It was because of my, because I knew somebody in that booster circle who said, look, they're, they're like soliciting here. And if yeah. we raise enough, you know, Willie's going to be gone. And sure yeah. enough, that happened. Yeah. So now we go to phase two. Yeah. Look. Phase two and phase three is not far behind. I, but, but you know, and, but we and, knew and all right, this was that, coming, that, and they don't have any money. Which, by the way, can now go back to my question: Brian Kelly, yeah, oh, Notre yeah. Dame just doesn't let him walk. There's something called a buyout, and FSU. What's his? I, I, I'd have to look. Oh. FSU uh, can't afford a hamburger at Sonic, much less a buyout. Yeah, and here's the dangerous game you play: a perception that can literally advance or. Detract from your program. Mm-hmm. If you go out on a coaching search and end up swinging and missing six times, that's hard to come back from, Hick. Right. Already we know that Bob, FSU's program isn't good enough for Bob Stoops. I, it, there's more nuance to it than that. Yeah. That is the insinuation that you get from trying for Bob Stoops and getting no response. Well, now when Brian Kelly, his name comes up, well, when he no longer – um. When he when when he no longer is a part of the plans, then well, the program's not good enough for Brian Kelly. And then you go to down the what happens then when you get to Mike Norvell, who decides, yeah, I'm just going to stay at Memphis, right? And suddenly you're through six, seven coaches, and there's an implication that your program is is less than what it is. I mean, you like to think we all like to think, especially if if you're a fan of a program or an alum of a program that has done a lot of big time winning national championships, college championships or conference championships, Heisman's. You'd like to think that if your job came open, anyone would want it. Right. And we're getting to the point now, by the way, here it is Friday, November 22nd. We're entering game week with FSU and Florida. I don't expect anything to come next this week, but Tom Block had said the Monday after Florida and listen, if you want a, uh, an alleged jump on everybody else, then you should be ready to name your new coach by early next week at the very latest. Before the Monday after. Or no, you saying I after? Say, I would say yeah, the Monday after, so no, a, a week, week from, from Monday. Monday. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, what, that's what Block um, reported. That's we'll, what I'm we'll saying. See, yeah, we'll see if it, if it you know, actually plays out that way. I so. mean, we, we, first we're going to do it because we were going to get a coach right away. And to his credit, the AD said, look, we'll, we'll have one by the end of November. Well, the end of November is – a week from Monday as well. So, yeah, it's true. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's time. Go, my point is, it's go time. Well, yeah, and and to be honest with you, I would expect a little more smoke right now. I mean, this this this, and this is from a podcast. I, Brian Kelly ain't coming to FSU. What are we doing? Yeah, I you leave Notre Dame for Florida State? Who would do that? Yeah, <laughs> on the a tweet they had their must champ. Here comes their butters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oof. Well, I, it was, you know, the Thrasher was at an event yesterday. Uh-huh. As part of the event he was introduced, they put up a bunch of uh, a collage of different coaches that are out there, and they uh-huh. put Butters on there. No, they did. Yes, they did. Now, it may have been just a ju- it may have been like a middle finger to Florida or something. But listen, the biggest, uh, but yeah, the biggest round. Of pretty life, cool. You know what's going to happen? He can win. You know it. what I'm starting to think is going to happen? He they're going to have to. They're going to have to just hire Odell Hagens. No one's going to take the job. With my dog, Clarabelle. 
<laughs> yeah, no one's going to take the job, and they're going to they're going to give it to, and then they'll make it sound like, ooh, it's what we wanted all along. After Boy, they interview twelve people, boys on Twitter swear big game Bob's still in the hunt. Um. Okay, I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is there is there a reason why you would think he's still in the hunt? Uh, the raising of the money, the fact that they need millions well, more. To... That that would be the home run. Yeah. That would be the home run. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that's a, that's a grand slam. If you go get Bob Stoops, then forget everything that I just said. Yeah. I'm Florida not. and Miami, where does that rank on your get your juices flowing? Florida Miami basketball today. Noon tip from Charleston. Just reeks of prestige, doesn't I'll, it? I'll peek at it. You're darn right I Yeah, will. well, you peeked yesterday. I but sure where did. does this 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 um crack is this as big as like a mid June Mets game? <laughs> what is that? I want to, a I tough want to, comparison. No, I'm going to put you on the passion scale. I want to know how important this is. The win or the loss could be determined by it. Um would you choose there are to, less. Would you choose to skip a mid June Mets game in order to watch this game? Well, they're not up against each other, so but, that's but a, say they are. That's a hypothetical. Yeah, I don't correct. like to get into hypotheticals, Jeff. I don't know that I, I can answer that question. Yeah. I'm going to go to the bathroom, then that's going to do it for Beef. The ten minute drill. Beef, was this a smart move to put this on Twitter? What? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't follow me. She doesn't? No. Okay. Who? What happened? Beef put on Twitter his story that he told us in the break. You well, guys we can, can see say it. it. Why can't we just, at Beef in the Box? Is there anybody listening right is now? She already you already worked. Say it. Yeah, uh, this is funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Mrs. Beef and Beef have two two lovely children. We yes. know we know the, the youngster, the kid that Petit almost drowned at my house, yeah. Petit Filet, nearly died. Uh, but Beef saved him in a heroic effort. Again, and perhaps that's why, why I'm on this list. Perhaps that's why he feels closer to you. But Mrs. P still disappointed that she couldn't be there to save him. Uh, the uh, Beef uh, son, you know, it's that time of the year, Thanksgiving. What are we thankful for at school? You do the little artwork yeah. and you this, list this the is, things. This is a dagger right to a woman's soul, man. <laughs> and so I mean, this kid, really, you need to have a talk with the, the little, little with the petite, dude. the little you five do. year old, yeah, a little, little five year old in kindergarten said, "What I'm thankful for? It's his list." Yeah, for you're allowed to say four things. Four things. Number one is his cat. Okay, okay. well, okay. shoot, everybody He's loves a big their fan cat. Of Mookie, man, he loves Mookie. Yeah, I That's love fine. I got no problem with All that. Right. A, a five-year-old kid loves his toys. All right, I'm yeah, thankful absolutely. for my toys. Okay, that's fine, okay, too. I yeah. mean, you know. I mean, world peace isn't going to show up. Number three the... is room. Uh, you know, I don't know. Eh, think, room, well, you're thankful but... to have a roof over your head, a bed. Yeah, yeah okay. You know, he's a room. He appreciates his privacy. He so, likes... oh, well, here's the problem. Uh-huh. There's only one spot left, so I hope he said parents. Parents, family, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Dad. Oh, oh no! Woo! Oh, no! Oh, Mom doesn't yeah! make the list! She's not oh, on the list! No! She's off the list! Oh, oh you, yeah, you Mom's need, out there. What? What's up? You need to go home and you need to tell Petit, if you do not love your mother more than me, you're grounded. By the way, uh, Beef, is there any possibility that maybe Mrs. Beef, and I don't know the pair, pair how she should look in the mirror. Is oh, it not no! her at all? Oh, the I'm piling on there. now, Mrs. Beef. <laughs> I hope she's not listening. She's not, not listening. There. Oh, I'm no. just asking. Oh. The question. Oh, I'm just asking the question. Now, not only is she a mother unloved by her son, but apparently it's her own fault. Oh, caller number two. <laughs> Woo!